Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to show you the best way to classify hyperspectral images in Python. I have already shown you how you could do that in MATLAB, but now it's time for Python. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about the best way to classify hyperspectral images in Python. Hyperspectral imaging is an advanced technique used in various fields such as remote sensing, medical imaging, agriculture, and environmental monitoring. It captures spectral information across a wide range of wavelengths, often spanning from the visible to the infrared spectrum. Unlike traditional imaging techniques that capture only three bands, red, green, and blue, hyperspectral imaging collects hundreds or even thousands of narrow and contiguous spectral bands. This high spectral resolution allows for detailed analysis and characterization of the materials present in the image scene. In hyperspectral imagery, an end member refers to pure spectral signatures representing the materials or substances present within the scene. These end members are essentially the building blocks of hyperspectral data and can represent various materials such as vegetation, water, soil, buildings, and other objects of interest. The process of identifying and extracting these end members from hyperspectral data is known as end member extraction or spectral unmixing. The spectra of the end members are prominent features in the hyperspectral data and can be used for efficient spectral unmixing, segmentation, and classification of hyperspectral images. In this video, I want to talk about the maximum distance or MAXD, which is an automated algorithm to find the spectral end members from hyperspectral image cubes. This method relies on the idea that the end members are assumed to be the vertices of the best fitting simplex that encompasses the data. This algorithm is automatic which requires little user input and works with all the spectra in the cube and produces the end members spectra directly. These types of algorithms have become widely used in the remote sensing community. One of the challenges with automatic end member determination is the uncertainty of how many end members to choose for a specific data set if there is no prior information as to the number of pure materials present in the image. This algorithm calculates the end members by finding a simplex containing the data based on a geometric representation of the data. The vector length of each pixel are calculated and the largest and the smallest distance from the origin forms the first two end members. The data is then projected onto a subspace orthogonal to the difference vector. This is done by subtracting the pseudo inverse of the difference vector from the identity matrix. With this, the first and second end members are projected onto one another and form a new point. The furthest point from this new point becomes the next end member and this is repeated until the required number of end members are calculated. These end members are then converted to a gram matrix and the determinant of the matrix is used to identify linearly independent sets. Non-zero determinants indicate linearly independent sets. By plotting the volume of each linearly independent set, which is the square root of the determinant, the number of distinct n-member spectra can be chosen from the graph to form the final n-member set. This figure shows the process of extracting four n-members. Now that the end members are specified, we can use them to classify the hyperspectral image, which can be done by performing maximum abundance classification, or MAC. An abundance map characterizes the distribution of an end member across a hyperspectral image. Each pixel in the image is either a pure pixel or a mixed pixel. The set of abundance values obtained for each pixel represents the percentage of each end member present in that pixel. In this example, I will classify the pixels in a hyperspectral image by finding the maximum abundance value for each pixel and assigning it to the associated end member class. In other words, the spectral reflectance present in the hyperspectral image is assigned to one of the end members class according to how similar they are to them. Let's go to Python and perform this classification process. Okay, here's the code for this problem. These are the libraries that we need, and these are the functions, hyper MNF, compute cov, which computes the covariance, max n members, which uses maximum distance to compute the n members, and this is hyper MNF, which uses maximum noise fraction to compute the principal components, and these to help compute the gram matrix, and this is to calculate the volume of the linearly independent n members, and this is where the function really starts. This is where our hyperspectral data is located, the HDR file, the header file, and the data itself. This is where we are opening and loading the data. And the last band is a noise, so I'm just going to exclude the last band. So I only have 151 bands. And I know that this data has 9 end members, but it doesn't matter what you put here. You just put a number here, and then you just check the volume of the linearly independent end members. 
Using that, you could tell if your number is correct or not. If on the 9n members, the volume is still not zero, that means you need one more. So you put 10, or you might need two more, or you might need three more, or you put 12. But if you put 9 and the volume is zero on the plot, that means you don't have 9n members, and it must be lower than 9. So you just have to check the volume of the linearly independent n members, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So this is where we reshape our hyperspectral data, and then we compute the principal components using maximum noise fraction, and then we compute the volume of the linearly independent n members, and then we also compute the gram matrices. And this is where we show the volume of the linearly independent n members, and using this you could tell how many n members you have, how many linearly independent n members you have. And then this is where you compute the n members using maximum distance, which is located here. And just one point about HyperMNF, it uses maximum noise fraction to compute the principal components. It helps decorrelate and also rescale the noise. It also arranges principal components in decreasing order of image quality. Okay, now that we have the M members, we could use them to classify this hyperspectral image. And for that, we just use maximum abundance, as I said before. And this is how we estimate the abundance using least square. And then we have nine classes, as I said. Class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then we match the indexes for plotting. And this is where we show the results. And we also add legend to the figure. And that said, it's very simple. So we just have to specify the number of n members, and then we extract them, and then we use them to classify the hyperspectral image using maximum abundance. Okay, let's run it and see what happens. Okay, the computations are being done. As you can see, there are NAND values in the last band of my hyperspectral data, so that's why I'm going to exclude the last band, but you might not need to do this. Okay, this is the plot of the N members, how many N members we have. So right here, where the determinant of the gram matrix approaches zero, but it's still not zero, that's where it indicates the number of linearly independent N members. And here it's nine. And this is the result, as you can see, for nine classes. Also, to access the code, you could use the link in the description section of this video. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.